Good morning. Good morning. Can, can you hear me in the back? Yes? Silence is assent. You do? <laughs> okay. My name is Professor Chris Alden. I'm the co-director of the South Global South Unit here at the LSE. We're very pleased to welcome you this, uh, this morning for what is the fifth annual CAF LSE conference, a conference dedicated to exploring ideas of globalization, uh, its impact on the international system with a particular emphasis, of course, on Latin America. Uh, we have a distinguished uh, set of speakers to address the, the question of leadership, institutions, and resilience. We think that this uh, unpacking this at this particular juncture in this era of instability will be something that uh, uh, is important for us to understand and, and we hope will provide the kinds of insights you've come to expect from previous CAF conferences. Um, if I can say just uh, something about the Global South Unit, 
We're working on this project with the LSE Ideas. Um, the Global South Unit is a research and teaching unit based in the International Relations Department. Our point of departure is that the Global South is an unexamined area, a relatively unexamined area uh, that developing regions and emerging powers in particular are redefining the world that we live in today and the necessity of providing a specialist unit examining that uh, has driven us towards uh, achieving this, this uh, particular uh, research and teaching agenda. We've got, if you check our website, we've got quite a range of, of publications, uh, research agendas, numerous events of which the CAF uh, conference is the, uh, 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 the highlight of the agenda. So without further ado, if I could, could ask uh, our pro-director, Paul Kelly, the LSE, to uh, say a few words. Thank you. Ambassadors, and there are a number of you here, distinguished guests, colleagues, students, friends of the school, welcome on behalf of the director to this fifth conference between um, CAF and LSE. Um, it's always a pleasure to welcome you here for this annual event, um, and this is the fifth of its kind. I'm here representing the director, who unfortunately can't be here, but nevertheless would like to pass on her welcome to you and to this event um, and acknowledge that it is something that we value highly. Um, as Chris has already identified and defined what you're going to do today, many of my talking points are now redundant, but um, I think it's important to have the, uh, the school here to acknowledge not just um, those of you who are here to support today's conference, but the ongoing relationship that supports it between CAF and um, the Global South Unit in the International Relations Department at LSE. Um, the Global South, in um, its full um, significance, is something that um, the school um, and, and the world needs to take more seriously as a place in which many of the challenges that we see take on a different character and are things from which we can learn to draw us away from simply focusing on Europe, North America, the North and the preoccupations that go with that. So. The Global South unit at the school is, is, is hugely significant in broadening the global remit of the school's study and of the research that it carries out and the activities and partnerships that it follow from that. So you have a full program, um, some very distinguished speakers. Um, you have what will be, I'm sure, a very interesting private lunch discussion um, on populism, chaired by Michael Cox. Um, so a very full day, which I hope you will all be able to participate in and draw plenty from. So with that, it's thank you to the, um, the supporters that we have here, um, particularly to um, the uh, vice president who is representing um, CAF today. Um, it's always a pleasure to have you here um, in the school and I hope that welcome is something that you feel in the future. So I'm very grateful to you for being here today. With that, uh, thank you all very much. I hope the day is productive and once again, um, welcome to the school. You, you've brought good weather with you and sun, which I, I always appreciate this time of year. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. If I, I could ask uh, uh, the, the um, Executive Vice President of CAF, Luis Enrique Berbetia, um, to, to um, speak. Uh, he is an economist uh, by training from the Wharton School, University of Pennsylvania, but has uh, also served at the IMF uh, and also in a diplomatic capacity 
uh, with, with OPEC and a number of other appointments uh, and uh, a very long career with CAF uh, as well within that. So please. Thank you very much, uh, Chris. Uh, Mr. Kelly, thank you for the welcome. I'd like to first uh, thank uh, professors Chris Alden, Alvaro Mendez of the Global South Unit for organizing this event with the support of Ms. Peggy Jean-Louis uh, and the LSE staff in general. This, uh, and I am, of course, very much honored to represent CAF at this fifth uh, CAF LSE conference, which aims, as Chris mentioned, to promote uh, the presence of Latin America in the thought processes uh, of this um, academia uh, in the uh, Western world and vice versa, of course, to uh, represent uh, also these thought processes in our own Latin American world. Our themes today include the topics of leadership, resilience, development in an era of uncertainty. And I would uh, like to concentrate on the idea of uh, uncertainty uh, because I think it's probably a characteristic of the times we are living in. Last night uh, over dinner with Chris, we discussed a little bit whether or not the period of post-war st uh, post stability that the world lived through, say, from 1945 through the early 90s may have been an exception of stability uh, in the recent uh, uh, world economic and political history. So I'll talk a little bit about the uh, relative stability that we lived for about 30 years after World War II with the Bretton Woods system that was established in 1944 with a system of fixed exchange rates based on the dollar and the gold standard, uh, which led to a very stable economic uh, world where there was low inflation, stable growth, predictability on many, on many fronts. Uncertainties began when the dollar was decoupled from gold in the early 70s. And this led to the floating or variable exchange rates that have characterized the world economy ever since. Uh, we lear learned to live with these uh, uncertainties for about 20 years until the mid-90s, I would say. Uh, we got used to the variability of exchange rates and the world remained relatively stable in an economic sense in those days. Then came globalization. Globalization really took off in the 90s with the development of very high-powered technological uh, innovations that combined with market integration, especially financial market integration, which multiplied the magnitudes of financial flows by the hundreds, by the thousands, and even more. Financial flows were, in fact, decoupled uh, from the real markets related to trade in goods and services. And that, that decoupling uh, has to a great extent led to a lot of the instability that we have observed since the 90s in the world economic system. There, there have been a tremendous increase uh, in the magnitudes, the volatility, and the speed of financial flows that affect uh, uh, that have introduced significant elements of uncertainty uh, in the world economic system. And in fact, this led uh, to the, what M Michel Camdessou, at the time managing director of the IMF, called the first financial crisis of the 21st century in 1995. This was the Mexican crisis, the tequila crisis. And he said it was the first financial crisis of the 21st century because it was the first financial crisis which was, in fact, the product of this globalization process, of the integration of technology, financial market, and the explosion of financial flows on a worldwide basis. This was followed a couple of years later by the Asian crisis, much larger, much stronger, more virulent. Uh, it, sp it spilled over into Russia, and from Russia, it spilled over into Brazil, 
and we know what happened to the Argentinian economy as a result of the uh, of the uh, decoupling of the real from the uh, from the dollar and the fact that Argentina, uh, for its own reasons, wanted to uh, remain with a very strong and very uh, fixed financial uh, exchange rate system. Then came the dot-com crisis. Perhaps that was a, an exception, was more limited. And then finally, in 2007, we had the uh, Lehman Brothers bankruptcy, which led to the uh, almost meltdown of the financial system in the United States and the global financial crisis, from which we are now recovering, beginning to recover. We're not really fully out of the woods. I think the, the, the message here is that each crisis has been followed by uh, an even stronger or larger crisis, and you can be sure that the conditions that have led to these, uh, this succession of crises are still there. We will have further crises in the future, and they will probably be more virulent than they have been in the past. So we must be ready for this uncertainty. At the same time, we enjoyed a, a relative political stability provided by a bipolar world that underpinned the Cold War until 1989 when the Berlin Wall came, came down. This has now evolved into an increasingly multipolar world, which is increasing the uncertainty, the political uncertainty uh, on, a, on, a, on a global basis. The US is no longer the hegemon, it's still the largest economy, the most powerful military, but psychologically uh, it does not seem to be uh, exercising the role that it has exercised for about 70 years after the Second World War. A world in which Russia is again flexing its, um, its military and political muscles uh, in Europe and in the, in the Near East. In which China's economic and military uh, expansion combined with its political ambitions are leading to increased geopolitical tensions in the Far East, in which the Middle East is no longer a powder keg. It has already partially exploded, and maybe there, there's another part of it to explode yet, uh, in which the Palestinian-Israeli conflict is far from being resolved. Thank you, Mr. Balfour, 100 years on. <laughs> and in which North Korea has now a nuclear button, perhaps smaller than Mr. Trump's, but potentially very dangerous anyway. So we have a fairly toxic brew of both economic and political uncertainties in which we must deal. And to that, we might add the uncertainties and the risks related to global warming and what that implies for economics, for security, for development in general. All the while, Mr. Trump is tweeting away the U.S. retrenchment from its leadership role, and Mrs. May is leading Great, Britain, uh, Great Britain's Brexit strategy, if there is one. Uh, it is in these minefields of uncertainty and unpredictability the developing countries must strive to continue developing and improving the social, economic, and political well-being of their populations. And Latin America is, of course, no exception to uh, these trends, to these needs, although we are fortunate in the fact that we are not in the center of the geopolitical storms that are brewing uh, across the world, although we are, of course, affected uh, by it. Some countries in Latin America are doing better than others, economically, politically, etc. Some countries, uh, many countries, are promoting increased integration as a mechanism that will contribute to the resiliency of our economies, both integration within Latin America and integration with the global economy. But uh, obviously, we need strong leadership in order to strengthen that resiliency. Uh, in order to navigate more effectively through the troubled waters that I have mentioned. Uh, these are the topics that uh, concern the conference, uh, but I prefer to leave the ideas of leadership and resiliency 
to the very fine speakers that will follow me on the podium. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much for setting the scene and reminding us why CAF is a development bank that's distinctive from other ones, that has a, a view, a vision that others lack. So thank you for that. Um, it's my uh, pleasure and, and honor to uh, welcome our keynote speaker, um, His Excellency David Chokawunka, Secretary General of ALBA T, uh, TCP. Um, he was born in the commune of Cota Cota um, Baja on the shores of Lake Titicaca in Bol Bolivia. Uh, he's currently the, as, uh, the Executive Secretary of the Bolivarian Alliance for the Peoples of Our America, the People's Trade Treaty. He's read, uh, he served, of course, as Foreign Minister in, uh, for Bolivia from 2006 to, 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 to 2017, so a very long and distinguished uh, role in the foreign policy realm. He, he, but, of course, his, his work and his interests go beyond uh, international relations as such. He's uh, read philosophy, political economy, rights of indigenous peoples, history, anthropology. Um, Sec uh, Secretary uh, Chokawonka is also an activist in defense of earth rights and human rights. So on, on that, uh, with that note, can I invite uh, the Secretary General to, to the podium, please? Thank you. The words by our colleague, Secretary Chokewanko, will be in Spanish, but we have some headsets here, if you need some. I know that a lot of you speak Spanish, but um, it will be useful, and we have translation as well. So if you need one, please raise your hand, and one of the crews here will help you. Buenos días, hermanos y hermanas, hermanos embajadores, embajadoras, autoridades de la CAF, del Colegio de Economía de Londres, Takpachani. Takpachani significa todos, todas y el todo. No solo existimos los seres humanos en este planeta, somos más que los seres humanos. Y cuando digo Tachpachani, estoy saludando a 